Throughout history, humans have had the desire to increase their power and influence over others. This desire would often prompt countries to wage war against others and hope that through a victory they would gain said desired power. However, these takeovers would often result in the looting and seizure of objects which had cultural significance to those on the losing side. This was seen in World War II when Hitler orchestrated the seizure of thousands of pieces of art from the Jewish population in Europe, as well as during the Napoleonic Wars where officials would select objects from countries they conquered, take what they wanted for themselves, and then destroy the ones that were not desired. This practice of looting objects from cultures through violence and force is a huge moral issue, and in recent years, the increased concern by the public has spurred an increase in cases where people are requesting the return or repatriation of objects that were taken from them in the past. The practice of returning objects is also known as repatriation, which is the process whereby certain types of cultural items are returned to lineal descendants. Not only is repatriation the morally right thing to do, it is a necessary step that needs to be taken in order to continue the healing process for cultures which have been negatively affected by these violent lootings throughout history. In order to understand the connection between museums and repatriation, it is necessary to understand the process for how museums were created. In the beginning, a museum was a room in the house of a wealthy individual that was filled with objects from all over the world and would be used as a way to show off one's wealth and status. Over time, this practice evolved and became more subtle, but is by no means extinct. Wealthy individuals continue to purchase historical treasures to be put on display throughout their home. Museums connect to this story as their creation was prompted through the donations of these wealthy individuals' collections, which were then put into a new space and open to the public for viewing, thus creating museums. However, this process of creation has resulted in questions surrounding legal ownership versus cultural ownership. For instance, even if the collections that were given to museums were through legal means, were the collections themselves created legally? This brings into question the claim that museums are the legal owners of the objects within their collection, as more people have considered the argument of cultural ownership to be more valid. This increased validity has created the act of repatriation through cultures requesting that objects within museums' collections should be returned in order to be utilized within the culture that created them. However, the process to carry out the repatriation of an object is difficult, as each case is different, meaning there is no one-size-fits-all policy to instruct museums or those seeking the repatriation of an object on how to go about the task. Despite this variability, there are still three main approaches to go about repatriation. Legal action, political involvement, or transparent conversations. The first approach that is often thought of in cases of repatriation is taking legal actions. The main battle faced by those seeking the repatriation of an object is that despite their cultural ownership, they are not the legal owners. The museums are. Therefore, judicial action is taken in order to create legal ownership by being granted the legal title of an object. If he or she has a better legal title to the object, then this eliminates many of the protections museums have as the owner of the objects within their collection. Once granted legal title, this allows for several approaches towards getting an object repatriated. One being establishing the object in question as stolen property. If the object in question can be qualified as stolen property, a majority of museums have policies in place that require them to return this property to its rightful owner. Although using legal action as a means to gain legal ownership is an effective approach for repatriation, there are still many drawbacks with this process. It can take months or even years in some cases and can cost a fortune in legal fees, all of which still won't guarantee that an object is repatriated. With the many drawbacks that come with legal action, there is a need for other approaches. One which is far more effective and civil is political involvement. With political involvement, there are many more openings for ethical arguments to support claims for repatriation. This stems from the most beneficial aspect of political involvement, international laws, and the many treaties that fall under the category of international law. Through treaties, there are more openings for ethical arguments, as many include guidelines that push museums to strengthen their moral obligations revolving around repatriation. One example is the International Council of Museums Code. It is a treaty that requires all members of a museum to observe accepted standards and laws that are established in the Museum Association's Code of Ethics, another treaty that falls under the branch of international law. 
The code states that museums are responsible and should strive to proactively champion ethical behavior, hugely supporting cases of repatriation that revolve around challenging a museum's ownership of an object based on past unethical practices. Similarly, the American Alliance of Museums created the National Standards and Best Practices for U.S. Museums in 2010, which is a framework for other ethical codes and implement procedures that go hand in hand with repatriation and the returning of culturally significant objects. The code even goes as far to designate an entire section solely to spelling out the process for giving back objects looted during the Nazi era. The benefit of political involvement over legal action is that governments often sign treaties which require museums to uphold a set of ethical standards that far surpass those created by the individual country's governments. Despite the many benefits of political involvement, the most beneficial way to approach claims of repatriation for all parties involved is to not involve the courts or government. Instead, resolve arguments through ongoing transparent conversations between those requesting repatriation and the museums holding said objects. However, this puts an emphasis on museums acknowledging, accepting, and admitting that certain objects within their collection are in fact there as a result of looting, violence, and potentially unethical purchases. With that acknowledgement from museums, it allows for an open and transparent conversation between museums and those seeking the repatriation of an object as long as there is a strong acknowledgement of the past faults that were made through the acquisition of the objects. The Denver Museum of Nature and Science is a prominent example of how transparent and open conversations between a museum and those seeking repatriation can result in a positive outcome. The museum had 115,000 culturally unidentified remains within their collection. Eventually, all remains within the museum's collection were returned and given the proper burial as dictated by each tribe. However, the success story was not because it was a straightforward case of repatriation. What made them such a strong success story was because the members of staff involved in the process truly believed that repatriation was necessary and wanted to take the proper steps to make amends for their ownership, even if it cost the museum time and money. This desire to make amends was what led to having such transparent and productive conversations between the museum and the 84 tribes that the remains potentially belonged to. Through working together in constant communication, they found the best possible solution for the repatriation of the remains. Despite the many moral arguments for why repatriation is necessary, there are still many who are against the practice. Some fear that the repatriation of one artifact will cause a domino effect and lead to entire museum collections being wiped out and eventually the institution of museums will cease to exist. Although museums will lose certain objects within their collection, repatriation will in no way lead to the end of museums. In fact, there have been many examples of repatriation where museums have been allowed to exhibit objects on loan, an outcome whose possibility increases the more willing museums are to communicate. In fact, through being involved in repatriation, museums have the opportunity to learn more about objects within their collections from people who have a deeper, richer understanding of them. Overall, repatriation will lead to positive outcomes for museums, not the destruction of their existence. Although legal action, political involvement, and transparent conversations are three processes to guide the repatriation of an object, increased public support will be the most beneficial way to keep museums accountable for their past and future actions. More importantly, it is vital to remember that repatriation is just a small step in trying to acknowledge the centuries of damage that have been done to certain cultures, and the small act of repatriation can have a massive impact on reestablishing these cultures.